The following presentation is part of the Beyond the Blast Doors network. You're listening to Around the Galaxy. On this episode, we're joined by voice actor and narrator of over 50 Star Wars audiobooks, Mark Thompson. Join us as we talk about the audiobook process, growing up with Star Wars, and here are some of your favorite characters. So strap yourselves in, relax, and enjoy this journey around the galaxy. I mean, we are a lot so mark thank you so much for joining me today how are you i'm doing quite well thanks for having me this is really cool oh awesome glad glad to get you on on here i mentioned just before we started that the highlight for New York Comic Con for me uh, this past year was I went to the the, the authors panel. Now I could probably oh yeah, I, and and if I say that you were the highlight, I'm probably going to piss off some of the people that I want to have on the show. But, <laughs> <laughs> but when they invited you up to read a little bit from Ascendancy, I guess it was. Oh right, yeah yeah yeah. It's neighbors. Are left in peace. It's enemies are left in the room. It is light and culture and glory. It is my home. The only one I ever know. It is the chess ascendancy. That was that was a highlight for me, and, and because um I'm gonna fanboy just briefly for a second, but for, for me, the voice of Thrawn is is your voice and um oh, wow. uh just a, a funny little little story i was i had bought i think it was the third book in the series and i was flying out to la for for a meeting and i was going to read the book on the plane and i started reading it and i was like i i can't do this without mark's voice on this i need <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh so maybe maybe tell people a little bit about how you uh, how you got into um um voice uh voice acting and, and narration for star wars Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, well, do you want the long story or the short story? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can start with Daria and move up from there. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Yeah. So I, uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I fell into acting in high school and I, I had some amazing teachers that really, you know, encouraged me and, and uh, gave me a lot of great mentoring. And um, so I, I ended up pursuing that and I came to NYU and, uh, about around my sophomore year, um, there was a posting on the cork board. This was like before the internet. <laughs> right. uh, they, they posted things on like cork boards or whatever. So uh, it was a posting for a cartoon on MTV. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's it was basically like you had to call up a phone number and leave a voice, on, like a character voice on a voicemail. <laughs> wow. And I was like, really? Okay. So and, it, and the cartoon was about vampires. Mm -hmm. So I think I was like, hello, I'd like to be on your cartoon, <laughs> you know, and I was just being like a Igor from Frankenstein or something. <laughs> and that was good enough to get me in the door. So then I got to go to Viacom and audition for that. And that one didn't go into production, but then they were starting uh, production on Daria, which mm -hmm. was a spinoff of Beavis and Butthead <laughs> <Right. laughs> and very much different than Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> but, uh, and I was lucky enough to get cast in that. Uh, my first ever uh, voiceover job, mm -hmm. I got cast as Kevin Thompson, which is hilarious because uh, Thompson is my last name, but Kevin right. Thompson now directs a bunch of the Star Wars audiobooks. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and he, at the time, was directing another cartoon about spies at the same time as we were recording Daria over at Sync Sound. So we, we kind of bumped into each other and didn't know each other then but then years later ended up working together on all this stuff so it's pretty crazy oh, that's wild. um but that was the beginning and then ever I, I ended up working a lot in animation and did like pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and uh ninja turtles and a bunch of shows and then eventually my agent called and said well have you ever done audiobooks right and i always tell this story but like i i was not much of a, a reader like in high school i kind of 
did the cliff notes version and you know just read the summaries of things <laughs> you know right, uh, right. i don't think i i think i finished one book in high school and the rest i just kind of you know uh you know, bluffed my way through on book reports and papers. So <laughs> I was not looking forward to having to read an entire book. So I, I was kind of downplaying it. And I was like, no, not really. I don't know if that's really my thing. And and my agent was like, well, what about a Star Wars audiobook? Would you be into that? And I was like, whoa, whoa, hold on. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, basically, uh, they gave me a short little script. And I, I worked on that thing like crazy. And I just, I, I, I read it over and over and over again. And I worked on the voices and I was praying. I was like, God, please let me get this. And uh, uh, long story short, they, they liked what I did enough that, that I got to do that. And uh, my first ever audiobook and my first ever Star Wars audiobook was the the Legacy of the Force uh, series. And, and, I, and mm -hmm. I, they wanted someone to voice those nine uh, books. So and uh, so, so that was kind of the beginning of it. And that, that kind of uh, launched everything else that's come since. <laughs> that's, that's wild. And you've done what, like 40 Star Wars books, right? Yeah, I think I might be up to 60 now or 50. Wow. Not, yeah, the last time I checked, I have, to, I have to look it up. But yeah, so. Wow. So how long does it, I, I'm going to ask some some generic questions because they're very curious to me. So how long does it take to 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 do a typical uh, a, a typical read through and 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 What's the process? So um, I guess everybody's different. Like uh, for me, I tend to be a bit of a slower reader. <laughs> so uh, for me, uh, I usually will get the script like maybe two or three weeks before we actually go into record. And uh, I'll, I'll read the script all the way through. And then as I'm reading it, I will jot down like anyone that has dialogue, any, any character that speaks. And I'll jot down like, you know, who they are. Uh, are they male? Are they female? Are they something in between? Are they alien? Are they human? Are they with the empire? Are they with the first door, the resistance, whatever, uh, whatever personality traits, like th does the author give me any clues about their voice? Like, do they use any interesting words to kind of talk about like, like a low gravel or a shrill shriek or, you know, like different things like that. Mm -hmm. I write all those notes down. And then I go back after I've read the whole story and I cast it, okay. uh, meaning like I think of like, OK, if these were if this were a movie, what actors would I want playing these roles or, or what what type of voice would I want in this role? And, you know, or if 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 this character is going to be talking in conversation with this character, I got to make sure that they're not too similar so that the listener doesn't get lost as to who's talking to who. And, right. and then if it's a character that's appeared in the movies before or video games or any of the cartoons, I try to look those up on, on YouTube and get yeah. references. And, and then I will uh, take my phone and I'll record like different samples of lines. Uh -huh. uh, so then, so that when I go into the booth, I can listen to that and kind of have that as a, a reference. And then from there uh, we'll go in the booth and that's usually for me about four to five days of like 10 till five or six at night, mm. um, kind of reading straight through. And then, you know, at, at first it's always a little herky jerky. Cause like I'll get to a new character and I'll listen to my reference. Like, right. Okay. That's what he sounds like. And then a new character comes in. So I got to stop and listen again. But then about day two or day three, I start getting in a rhythm and I start kind of remembering instinctually which character is which and then i can start ping-ponging a little bit right um, but there's a lot of flubbing there's a lot of <laughs> inverting sentences and tripping over my words and so uh like paul goodrich and now it's uh, justin kilpatrick and kevin thompson they they are magicians behind the keyboard like they, they <laughs> take all my mistakes and just cut them out and then they put all the music and effects in and uh yeah. and they really end up uh for for anyone who hasn't listened to the audiobooks they really end up like almost like radio plays like they, they're like movies yeah. in your mind because they're so layered with like music and effects and ambience and and processing on different characters if they're like droids or aliens and so they're, they're really special because i've ended up doing other audiobooks that aren't star wars right and sometimes i'll ask the director so like what what vocal effect do you think you'll put on this this character? Because it you know, and, and, the, and the guy looked at me like vocal effect. What, what are you talking about? I was like, <laughs> oh, like what what music is like? No, no, it's just it's just you and your voice. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the Star Wars ones really are special, and they they do an amazing job producing those. They really, yeah, they they really do become sort of they they add just enough music and just enough sound effects to yeah. to to 
to augment the story and, and, and that sort of thing. And so as we, we were saying before, you're, you're going to find him a little bit of a Thrawn obsessive. And <laughs> <laughs> how did, because the, the voice for Thrawn that you came up with or any, let's, let's use any characters. Cause I even like, I love like Eli Vanto and, and the original, the characters that didn't have a voice before you came along. And to say that about Thrawn isn't entirely true. Cause I guess he was in video games and there were the other Thrawn novels, but how do you, and, and not just necessarily Thrawn, but, a character that is going to have a big part in a story that hasn't been heard before. Mm. What kind of influences go into creating that sort of, um, sort of, sort of sound for a character? Yeah. Um, well, Thrawn was an interesting one because uh, originally I got introduced to Thrawn because uh, we were doing like a 25th anniversary of the heir to the empire. Um, so they, I think there's several audio productions of that. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to get to do the the, the kind of re-release or the, the anniversary edition. Um, and so I was originally playing around with the idea of th there's a lot of xenophobia with Thrawn in, in the Empire yeah. and people kind of treating him, you know, differently because he's, he's this, this alien and he's blue skinned and red eyes. And he kind of like is not accepted by a lot of his peers in, in the Empire. Right. And so I was originally playing around with him having a bit of an accent that, that made it him uh, not sound really British, but maybe like something that would be foreign to the empire. Right. Um, and I, I think it was like a slight uh, German accent that we were playing with. And um, we got through like, I think a chapter or something <laughs> trying it that way. And then uh, I remember Kevin kind of said, you know, I, I understand why you chose to do that, but, I think we're missing the sense of who Thrawn is as a character because Kevin said, w when you read Thrawn, he really is Sherlock Holmes. Like he really, you know, like he's, right. he's able to deduce things and kind of, you know, so he said, why don't we, why don't we go back and redo this more like as if he's a version of Sherlock Holmes, you know, and mm. Admiral Pellian is uh, Watson and, you know, and, and so then that was an interesting way to look at it, uh, to, to, to approach it from a different angle. So we went back, and kind of approached it that way. And, th and then that stuck for kind of the, the anniversary editions that we were retelling. Um, and then when uh, Disney bought uh, Lucasfilm and a lot of those books were then kind of decided to be legend and they decided to bring Thrawn back uh, when he was on uh, Rebels, yeah. uh, Lars uh, Mickelson does Thrawn and it's it's a, it's 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 definitely kind of a British accent, but he he has a, a very unique accent, yeah. Um, that that I try to mimic, or at least a, a very unique cadence and things like that. Um, so then 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 when we did the new Thrawn books, I was trying to emulate that, and I was trying. So it's so it's even slightly different from the anniversary editions that we did. Right. And I'm trying to emulate what Lars is doing now, um, and I'm you know I'm trying to get as close as I can to that because I feel like that's where a lot of current listeners are going to, you know, maybe no Thrawn from rebels or like, I don't, you know, I want to try to honor what's, what's being done there. So it's, it's, it's an interesting process. Like, <laughs> yeah, like so, all the different versions of his voice. Did you speak to Lars specifically? Did, like, did you have an, or did you just listen and, and try to. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've never had the pleasure to meet him. Uh, but he's, I, I love what he does. Cause it, yeah. it is this, it, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge when we're doing the audio books because it is such a soft, like, you know, like almost monotone, but like it, it because it communicates so much control, you know, and right. it, it indicates so right. much like, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, uh, I'm not going to lose control in any way, you know, and in the audiobooks, that's a bit of a challenge because all the other characters will will shout and react and get mad. And, and like, so we're trying to keep the level consistent. Right. Uh, so sometimes, you know, so he's like, you know, I'm Pelian. It is an honor to have you on the bridge of the Chimera. And it's like, you know, sometimes they have to like really turn my gain up on that. You know? like, <laughs> Compress um, the hell out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I, I loved, uh, I don't know, I think I've told this before, but um, when I was watching them on Rebels, I was so excited because I was like, oh, that's Thrawn and I've been Thrawn, you know. Uh, and, but there was a part of me that was like, well, you know, I did the legends version and now they're probably going to want to recast and do somebody for the, the established Canon version. Right. Um, but I was kind of like wondering like, well, could I do this? So like when he first came on, like I'm watching it with my kids and I'm, I'm like to myself kind of repeating lines back to, you know, 
singular your caligari you know what I mean? and they're like <laughs> like that what are you doing and i was like oh sorry 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 and they're like i'm trying to like see like could could i do this and then sure enough they said you know we still want you to do this i was like oh great you know so like uh i was nervous that maybe i i would get replaced but that uh i'm grateful that i i still get to do them what i think is interesting about thrown from an audio book standpoint is that he slows things down with the way he speaks. So even if you're in the most intense action moment, he never, and that might be, I imagine it's difficult for you to not speed him up because he would never speak that quickly. Right. Whereas you right. have the other characters. So I, I and I, the, the pacing I think is, is one of the biggest challenges. I tried to do an audio book version of a short story I wrote and it was just, it was, I was, I was like, I don't know how people do this because you're, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like I, I play drums, I play bass and the tempo, it's the same kind of thing, right? You have to yeah. kind of keep that. It, you can't speed up in a chapter unless it, it fits with the, the pacing. Itself. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. I mean, I think like, obviously Timothy Zahn created Thrawn. And, and so obviously he, he understands his pace and his, the way he thinks and the way he would interact with other characters. So um so much of that pacing is also in the writing so so it so it matches it, it blends together pretty seamlessly because you know there's at least for me when i'm reading it it's easy to hear that voice mm -hmm. um and that and that pace and that tone with the lines that he's written because you know and, and it, it it's funny sometimes because the other characters that he's interacting with are, are just as infuriated that like, why is he, you know, <laughs> like so calm right now? Like, how can he be this like at peace when this battle's going on around him? And it's so, and so that it, it is fun to kind of, that that's written in there, but it's also fun that when the other characters talk, it's easy for them to speak more rapidly or louder or more anxiously because it's right. all, it's all on the page. Like it's like in that, that interaction is the fun of Thrawn like that, that, you know, he can get ev under everybody's skin because it's like, how can he be that calm? Like, like, doesn't he understand what's going on? And no, he does. And he's three <laughs> steps ahead of you. So, right. Right. So I, I, I keep talking about, but are there, are, are there other characters that you particularly love to do? Or are there characters that you, you sort of look for on the page and, and look forward to, to voicing? Well, I mean, anytime I, I'm a, I'm a big Jedi fan. And anytime I get to do uh, Yoda, it's a dream come true just because that character means so much to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then obviously like, you know, Luke and Han and all those guys, it's just, I, you know, it, that, that's like all my nostalgia and all my childhood and like, just the, you know, it's, it's a combination of fear of messing it up, but honor that I get to play in that sandbox. So it's really cool. Do you find it's harder to do characters that people know the voice for? Is that, is it harder to do? And, or is it more, as you were just saying, you know, geez, I don't want to screw this up because it's right. a legacy behind it. Or, or do you, do you look at it as a, as a challenge or. I guess it's a combination of all three. Cause I, I think like sometimes it's like, I, I know that as a listener, how important it would be to me that that voice sounds like what I know it to right. be. You know? And like, so sometimes there's certain voices that are a little bit more natural to me. And then there's other voices where I feel like ah, I'm just not getting it. And is this going to be like fingernails on a chalkboard to a listener because they, you know, it doesn't sound like, you know, that actor or that portrayal or, you know, so it's a combination because so sometimes I, I really feel that pressure and I really feel that, um, that, that, uh, that kind of inner critic saying it's, it's not the way so-and-so does it, you know, right. right. <laughs> but then other times, uh, it is like, I feel like, okay, Oh, that was in the pocket or that, that felt like what it would feel like if that were in the movie. And then, then it's very fulfilling uh, to do it and fun because, because then I also know like as a fan, like it's, it's like getting to see another film with that character that you love so much. And, and, right. and you know, so, so I guess it's a combination of both. Like, I feel like uh, I, I do feel a, a certain amount of pressure about it. Um, but at a certain point you have to let go of that pressure uh or else it'll paralyze you and and it won't you, you won't do anything and you'll you'll be scared to try anything because you'll be so afraid of getting it wrong do you do you find it uh difficult or or do you find it um uh how, how do you approach doing female voices? because like for example on resistance reborn yeah 
there's so much Leia. There's a bit of Ray. How do how do you how do you go about that as a as a narrator, or is that just something you've gotten comfortable with? Is there any sort of apprehension as you go into that, or? I mean, a little bit because uh, I don't want it to sound like la la la. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't want to dishonor the the women either, and I and I, I I always there's always a part of me that thinks the listener is like, give me a break. I mean, <laughs> you're this forty year old trying to sound like a woman and get get out, you know. And but I I feel like uh, if I, I I just try to lighten it ever so slightly and and kind of place it more in my head voice as opposed to my chest voice, and then I mean, th there's there's a cadence that I feel like Leia speaks with or you know. Or, or that Ray speaks with. And I, I, I try to latch on to those characteristics and then try to just suspend my disbelief that, you know, right. <laughs> the, the low baritone stuff is, I try to just put it in my head voice as much as possible without pitching it up where it's ridiculous and, and, and takes you out of the story that way, you know, but uh, right. I, I guess I just try to surrender and do the best I can and hope for the best. <laughs> So with, um, you know, there's been a lot of rumors, et cetera, of, of some characters be, being cast as, you know, from from animation to to live action. What yeah. what are your thoughts uh, on that? And are there any characters that you'd like to see that have only uh, appeared in, in the books that you've read in, to come come to live action? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm all for it. Like, I, I have loved the Mandalorian so much. I just felt like. It was so perfect in its tone, and it, and it it really captured the the spirit of Star Wars in so many ways. The look of Star Wars, and it just it felt like it fit in with everything. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I, I I loved I loved the Mandalorian. I you know I hope we're not spoiling anything, but like <laughs> not, I loved seeing the dark saber. And so as yeah. soon as I saw the dark saber. Yeah. My first thought was, "Oh, whoa! Like, <laughs> could we see Sabine? Could we see Ahsoka? Could we, you know? I would love to see Ezra. I would love, you know, I'd love to see Thrawn. Like, I, I yeah. think it'd be so fun to see, you know, Thrawn and Bo Katan and like, you know, like, so like I'm. Whether that all happens in future seasons of The Mandalorian or they get their own shows, like, I would love to see all of that. You know, yeah. Uh, there's there's even a part of me, and maybe not everybody would be on board with this, but I I would love to see." Luke Skywalker in that time period between six and seven, you know, and I, I yep. would love to maybe see like if they play with the de-aging technology or Sebastian Stan looks a lot like Mark Hamill, people have pointed right. out, <laughs> you know, yeah. so like, yep. like it'd be fun to see him, you know, what, what he did to kind of start the Jedi order and, and kind of see Luke in his heyday as mm -hmm. Grandmaster Luke. And, you know, so like, I, I feel like there's so much potential, like I, there was rumors of a young Leia, show yeah. and you know people are throwing around millie bobby brown and I, you know it's right. just so like that, all yeah. that stuff i would <laughs> i would love it I, I think it'd be great that's cool I, you know i think that's one of the great things i've been so lucky to when i've spoken to to people who've been a part of star wars whether it's authors or or, or voices or characters so many of them t seem to be true true fans and and watching your youtube page and, and following you uh you're clearly a star wars fan when when were you introduced to star wars how old were you what was that experience i mean i'm one of those kids that i think it's always been there for me like i i i was too young to remember like this was the moment i first saw the film because i feel like the action figures and and just it being on like on TBS or whatever it was, you know, like growing up, it just, it, it just, it always feels like it's been a part of my life, you know? Um, so like, I, I think I, I was, I was born in 75. So I don't, I don't think I saw a new hope in the theater, but I remember seeing empire in the theater. Mm -hmm. and I remember like Luke crash landing on Dagobah and then R2 falling in the water. Right. And like, uh, and Luke's like R2, R2, where are you? And I remember screaming out, he's in the water. And like, <laughs> you know, like, so, um, but that, you know, but it's just, it's just always been there. Like it was always on, we had the VHSs and, and then, you know, it, it like the action figures growing up and it just, it was, it was ever present and uh, really formative for me. Like really, really, I'm, I'm one of those people that <laughs> it was, it was my religion before I <laughs> found yeah. religion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and, and it's it's so it's so 
interesting because I was I just uh, I spoke to uh, a guy who's a visual effects artist, a guy named um, um, Yoshi Vu, and he was on the show this past week, and oh, yeah. he talked about how that be growing up a Star Wars fan and to he actually he worked on uh, Rise of Skywalker, and so that connection oh, wow. was was just sort of uh, mind boggling. How do you ever just stop, sit back, and and think you know I'm I'm a part of this Star Wars universe now. All the time. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's like, and I think, I, I think it is like a special time because it does feel like everyone that's making Star Wars currently grew up on Star Wars. So like, there's yeah. like, uh, there's an expertise <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and uh, a deep knowledge of this stuff in, in all the people that are producing it right now. So, and, and it's so, so it's like, I don't know that I, I'm trying to think of any other like maybe like Marvel Comics or, or, or people that work on DC Comics and stuff like that, uh, that that might be similar to. But that it, it seems like such a rare, special thing uh, for, for people to have uh, to 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 love it so much and then to get to be a part of creating new stuff. I, I yeah. think because it, it just it elevates the bar and, and it just it, it just so much love and effort. It's, it's It's not no one I feel like is doing it and just kind of doing the bare minimum like anybody right. that does that is, is like really like this is a dream come true for them so they're 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 putting everything they have into it and i feel like it really shows i know there's some debate about you know people always prefer certain trilogies over other trilogies or mm -hmm. you know and it's a lot of times it centers around which one you grew up with <laughs> so right. right um but I, I i'm one of the people that loves it all like i you know i'm i can see the flaws in things but i I just really love it all. And, and I think it really shows how much the people that are making it do love it and care for it. So it's, it's really true. It's, it's, and I guess it's kind of, you know, you might say, I'm not as much of a comic book fan of, of any genre, whether it's star Wars or superheroes or whatever. I went through like a little phase in the nineties where I was big into comics, but, but similarly, I guess you're seeing, it's a similar sort of thing in that the people who make comic books grew up on comic books and, yeah. and, and that love is there. And, and you're right. I mean, and you can see it. I, you mentioned Mandalorian and to me, Mandalorian is, is that sort of perfect next step, right? You have Dave Filoni who is trained by George right. and now creating stories with who may be, I, I, I hesitate to call Favreau the next George, but you know, he's, he plays in that technology realm. He plays yeah. in the storytelling realm and, yeah, yeah. and, and the stories we're getting are, are really, really. I great. assume you've watched the, the behind the scenes. Yes. Uh, what the yep. name of that is, but the, the gallery. Yep. The gallery. Yeah. 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 It's just that I got that feeling from that. Like when you look at the advancements in technology that they're making, it felt very much like George Lucas you know, and, and the advancements he made with, you know, yeah. CGI characters or, or stop motion, or like, you know, kind of combining the green screen and all this, like just all the advancements, it, it very much felt that way. Like now yeah. you're getting a true authentic story that's incredibly moving and, and mythological, but you're getting those technological advances too. And so it just felt like it's continuing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so good. And I, I said this, I, 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 I've said this on the show a couple of times, but I, I, I love watching the gallery because I love watching Filoni and I feel yeah. like Filoni is very, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but he's, he feels like he's, he's in a different world in that I see him as, and this is said in the most loving way. He's the nerd at the table, right? Yeah, you, yeah. Have, you have these, you know, these guys who've created, you know, multi-million dollar films and things. And he's like, he knows all the details about, you know, how, how long is the, the, you know, the anterior gun on a blah, blah, blah. Like he knows that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and he's just having fun. Cause he's making, he's making stories and, and, yeah. and they're coming together that way, which is really phenomenal. And I, I love that he like, really like that. I know everybody talks about it, but the whole, when he breaks down, like, the fact that Anakin needs a father figure instead of a brother figure. And I think it was in the third episode or something yeah. like that. It's just like the, the level of understanding he has of like the philosophy behind yeah. this stuff. So it's, it's not just like, Oh, let's throw in a cool reference or, Oh, let's throw in a cool character. Like, cause uh, Easter egg, you know, like he, yep. he gets the deep rooted, like heart behind the storytelling. And like, you know, it's just in, in a way that, you know, not many people do. And, and so, like, and it's why I feel like, you know, when you look at Rebels or Clone Wars, like just the, the storytelling, like all the effects are amazing, but yep. the storytelling is what's so essential. And he just really gets that to the core. Yeah. Yeah, he, he definitely does. And I think that that's, 
I wish he was a little bit more closely tied to um, Resistance because I felt like Resistance didn't. It was a cool show. It was fun. My seven year old loved it and it had cool stuff, but it didn't have that same sort of direct connection, I feel like. My dog is trying to scratch her head off. (laughs) (laughs) It's right. You may have heard my dog barking uh, a little bit earlier. (laughs) No worries at all. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention your your reaction videos you are like the <laughs> i think you might you might be uh, among the tops in the reaction videos and, and, and you've done it for everything now so like how did you get into what made you decide to do it was it you just saw you know the same kind of thing that a lot of people have done or did you yeah like uh um i forget how i saw it like i feel like I'm trying to remember the first one i saw but like i saw somebody do a reaction video to something and and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like you know, like I didn't I didn't think to do that. Right. And then when uh, Force Awakens was coming out, I was like, I want to. I, I, I we should tape this because this is like historical. Like this is a, a big deal, you know. Right. So like, so we did that one, and and my kids were kind of younger then, and it it was fun, and and that ended up getting a lot of views for whatever reason. And it was, like, <laughs> oh, it was cool. So then we just started doing them for fun. And, uh, and some of them have gotten a lot of views and, and it's, it's really fun. And it's, it's just, it, it's a way to like, kind of be in the room with people that you don't get to be in the room with, because it's like, it's one of my favorite things about, uh, you know, like, like celebration, like when we all get to watch the trailer together and, and be yeah. in the room with thousands of people and, and that community feeling of reacting to it. Like that was the feeling I got when I started watching other people do reaction videos. And I was like, oh, this is a fun way to do that when you're not at a convention. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. And it's, it's, it's really cool. And, and you do like, I, I've seen you walk around conventions in Jedi robes and you, you're, yeah. you're like, you're, you're full on fan, which is. Yeah. Which is so great. <laughs> so great. I know I had- Del Rey would uh, feel like that might be unprofessional, but they actually ended up encouraging it. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so. are, are there any particular experiences you've had uh, in, in your role um, creating uh, 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 the characters for Star Wars, or, or or any sort of experience with Star Wars that just sort of sticks out to you is this is that was a, a magical moment. Oh yeah, um, I mean, there's several. Uh, I mean, I, I I've had like interactions with fans that kind of surprised me and ended up being very moving uh i I, there's a few fans i went i I met that like what there was one fan i met who was a soldier and uh he he said that he had ptsd and um he said that one of the things that helped him to like calm down uh was when you know he was on duty or like like not like where it was like interfering with the job he had to do but like when he's trying to calm down he would listen to the audiobooks like on base and it, and it would really help him wow. um and he, he he actually brought me an american flag that like flew over the base that he was at and so that was incredibly moving wow. uh, i've had other fans uh tell me that you know they uh like there was one fan who i think i believe was legally blind or, or had some vision issues and it, it prevented them from being able to read uh the books, but, but he chose to listen to them and, hmm. and that, you know, that was a way for him to still participate in all this. And so I found that really moving and, and, and very meaningful. And, you know, cause like when you're doing it, you're just like, it's star Wars. Let's have fun. You know? Right. Right. Like, like uh, to hear that it actually meant something th- that deep to someone else. Uh, it really meant a lot, you know, and it was really cool. And, um, and then, uh when i was recording the last jedi novelization uh my mom was very sick Mm. and uh she was pretty close to to dying and uh the narrating the scene of luke kind of saying goodbye to uh leia the way he kissed her on the forehead i I had actually done that the last time i saw my mom in the hospital Mm. And so that was kind of emotional. Um, and uh, the, the the line, no one's ever really gone, um, kind of took on an additional meaning for me 
mm. um, because I, I narrated that, um, and then she never got to hear that particular production. But um, so that, but but there was something about narrating that moment, and I connected it to that moment with her, and uh, it just ended up meaning a lot more um, than it normally would have. So yeah, yeah, wow, that's that's powerful stuff. Wow. Yeah, it's um, it, it's it's also interesting, you know, that I think we forget. There's a certain level, a certain different different engagements as fans, right? There's the, the you know, there's the. I always sort of me and me and the, a friend of mine on, on the podcast network, we call them normies. You know, the the regular people who go yeah, yeah. see a Star Wars yeah. movie. The, there's that sort of. Yeah, I'll go see yeah. it. Sure. That's fun. sure why not? Um, and then you have that sort of range. Um, but what what I found over the last year and change um, engaging with fans on the show is that it's it's not at all surprising that Star Wars is is helping them through different things. And um, and I think sometimes we forget that. And I think that's the challenge with with social media. And I I won't beat up that horse here, but. You know, people uh, attach themselves, whether to it, a line that now means something to you that it never would have meant before yeah. um, or a film or a relationship in, in a movie. It, 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 you have to be mindful that you're you're not just at times criticizing somebody's um, appreciation or love of a movie. Wow. You're, you're hitting them at a very personal space, whether it's wow. that soldier who it helped him through the toughest times or, or whatever. I mean, it's. It, it, it's it's we need to remember that you know hey you may not have loved last jedi and i may have or whatever but we don't need to fight about it and it's yeah. because it means something to me yeah yeah that, i yeah that's very true um because because these these things are you know more than just movies for some people <laughs> like yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah. They're way more than just a movie so uh yeah and so that's important to remember that's a great point Absolutely. Well, cool. Well, good. So, all right. So I'm, I want to ask some questions of some of the characters that you have played. Let's uh, lighten this up a little bit. The, the, the good news is these are, um, we're going to have some fun with it. So you're not going to need to, although you probably do know every detail about every movie. You do really <laughs> so like, like, for example, I'd like to ask Han Solo. He, <laughs> I, I understand you're having some, some problems with your kid. You can, you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh boy, you know Chewie. I just I'm trying to do the best I can, but this kid always wants to play with me, and it's just I want to go on the Falcon and just do a job or something. I can't, I can't be tied down like this. <laughs> now, Leia, pick up Ben, would you? I'm gonna go on the Falcon. I gotta fix the hyperdrive. Chewie, punch it. <laughs> Excellent. You got the Chewie in there. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, I, I want to ask Yoda a question, if you don't mind. I'm sure you've seen The Mandalorian. We were just talking about it, Master Yoda. But what are your feelings about this character they call Baby Yoda? Uh, concerning this character is <laughs> stealing the spotlight from me. This infant will not. Original Yoda, I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'd like to ask C-3PO a question. Are there any memories that R2 brought back to you after your mind was wiped on Kajimi that you wish he didn't bring back? I think R2 is lying to me. There's no way I would have panicked that much on the Death Star. He must be making these facts up. I think he has a faulty memory chip. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so, Poe, if Ray was to gift you the Millennium Falcon. Are there any modifications you might make to make it a better ship? I think I got to put a little extra hyperdrive on there. I'm the best pilot in the galaxy. I'm going to put another engine on there like BB-8. Punch it. Excellent. All right, Mr. Binks, I have to ask you, what are some of the perks of being a senator in the Imperial Senate? Ooh, this will get all kinds of perks from being in the Senate. They're always sending me out and allowing me to have the little foodies that they give in the Senate green room. They taste a muy, muy good. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Eli Vanto, I'd like to ask you a question about what is the hardest thing about working with Grand Admiral Thrawn? Well, I think sometimes he tends to say the word perhaps. Perhaps a bit too much. <laughs> Could be wrong, but it just seems frustrating sometimes. Get get to the point. 
Grand Admiral. <laughs> I have to say, I love that oppos the opposition of Elo's Eli's sort of southern accent against yeah. Thrawn's very yeah. That, I thought that was great. And uh, Eli Vanto was a character that I didn't love at first until uh -huh. I listened to the way you brought him to life, which was fantastic. <laughs> All right, a couple more. I have to ask General Kenobi a question. Come clean. When Luke asked you about his father on Tatooine, have you been working on that story the whole time, or did you make that up at that moment? I suppose it's all a matter of your point of view. If I made it up in the moment, would it really be that different than if I made it up a long time ago? Excellent. Very good. And finally, I'm going to, I know it may be a little bit below you, Grand Admiral, but could, could I ask you to do a, uh, uh, a little bit of a bumper for the Beyond the Blast Doors network and, and say something like what appears on your screen right now? The following presentation is part of the Beyond the Blast Doors network. You're listening to Around the Galaxy. Well, excellent. I'll never need to do another intro to the show again. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. So keeping with the theme, of, thank you so much for doing that. That was so yeah, great yeah, to hear yeah. all those characters. <laughs> Any characters I left off that you you love that you want to you do? No, I think was, you, you had a lot of them. I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, when is this going to end? <laughs> you may fire when ready. But in keeping with the Inside the Actors Studio sort of theme, we I, I end every episode with a, sort of a 10 question kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to, if you don't mind it, there's no wrong answers, although okay. people, may, people may judge you forever from these. So no, yeah. no pressure. <laughs> That's great. So what is your favorite Star Wars movie, TV show or book? Uh, I know it's cliche, but it's Empire for me. Uh, I just, the, the Yoda means so much to me and uh I, I loved all the teaching on the force and uh and 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 the establishment of the more of the jedi there so empire strikes back excellent what is your least favorite star wars movie tv show or book oh, you know I, i'm gonna i'm gonna I know, I'll, I'll tell you i jason fry when i had him on the show he had the best response he said he at the time there were uh only uh 10 star wars movies he said his 10th favorite was so oh, but, okay <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i mean um uh I, I, I'm kind of in that same boat. Like, I really do love them all. Like, I, I think, uh, I think I might say my least favorite, right? You know, from Jason's book is, is was Attack of the Clones. Although I loved Yoda, you know, dueling Dooku. I thought that was amazing, and I was literally <laughs> jumping out of my seat in the theater. But some, some of the dialogue between Anakin and Padme during the love scenes made me cringe a little bit so yeah 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 you know it's i mean the way i look at it is it, it's gravity right something has to fall to the bottom <laughs> yeah but uh but that's that's fair and and you know if it makes you feel any better an incredibly high percentage of people say the same film so okay, oh, yeah, wow. you're, you're uh you're, you're not gonna offend anybody with that one so uh would you consider yourself imperial or rebel 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 all the way all right what is your favorite Star Wars sound effect? Ooh, um, I'm gonna go with lightsabers. Like I, I, uh, there's something so iconic about it, and I, I feel like from a visual standpoint, and from a like, I just, I just love lightsabers so much. I just, mm. <laughs> I just think I'm part of the Rebel Legion and the Saber Guild, and uh, oh, you are cool. Yeah, and it just, uh, I, I just, I'm so into lightsabers. <laughs> I just think they're magical. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, the Saber Guild. I think that's a that's a group that needs more attention. And the Five Hundred First sort of uh, the Saber Guild came um, my son's fifth birthday party. Oh, really? I had yeah, I had the um, which group was it? Um, I can't remember exactly which one, but they came and they uh, they taught 10 five-year-olds how to yes. swing a lightsaber. And it was yes. so fantastic. Uh, although the, the thing I do always say is it was great. And then they left and I had 10 to 12 five-year-olds running around with lightsabers. Oh, was, yeah. <laughs> Deal with it. Good luck. <laughs> but it was so great. They, you know, they were so... Um, 
and I encourage anybody who has a, a kid who loves Star Wars to to do that because I, I mean you could tell us about it. It's I mean they train the kids. They yeah, yeah my uh, I I I don't want to say this wrong, but like I'm pretty sure it started in uh, I'm pretty sure Ruben and Amy I think started it, but uh, started the Padawan Training Institute. Is that I think they're yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I may be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's true. But like it's basically like they get the kids and they have them stand on these little um, like dots or, or like, like placeholders on the, on the floor yep. and, and the Jedi come out and we'll, we'll teach them like very basic combinations. Like this is how you block your left shoulder and this is how you block your right shoulder. Yep. And then some of the characters will come in dressed as Sith. Yep. And then it's like a, it's like a, like almost like a martial arts drill. Like you'll, you'll practice like block, block, strike. And uh, it's all very choreographed and all very safe and they go over the rules, but it's uh it's really cool because like it's 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 it kind of mirrors what they uh, do at Disney World where they where they have the the, uh, the the Jedi training there and we're kind of imitating that. But it's it's really special because the kids get really into it and and the Saber Guild is great about, you know, really being in character and, and trying to make it an event for them. And so yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's it's really special. It's really fun. It was so it, they, they were so consistent about staying in character in fact when uh uh one of the the jedi masters pulled up in his honda he pulled up down the road a little bit from the house so yeah. he, <laughs> he was like yeah, he he it was it was so great but for for weeks after my son would would you know he would do that okay block duck does that you know he did the whole thing which was yeah so yeah cool. yeah so, awesome. uh, but yeah and again much like the 501st all they just did it for charity they yep. they they told me a, a charity they wanted a donation for and we did it and that was yeah. all they asked which is so great and the, the yeah. star wars community is is truly amazing in that <clears throat> so all right the next question the fifth question is who's your favorite droid r2 3po or bb8 oh man these are hard <laughs> oh golly um i'm gonna go with r2d2 just for nostalgia and oh and i'm wearing an r2d2 shirt right now look at that um so uh i'm gonna go with r2d2 Awesome. Very cool. Uh, speaking of uh, Jason Fry, I've, I haven't mentioned this in a while. When he was on the show, he went into this great five minute rant about how C3PO is actually a monster. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he's so concerned about just himself. And this, I loved your, 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 your response to the 3PO question because that's exactly the way he would have responded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not me. It wouldn't have been me. Not and, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is: What spaceship or vehicle from the Star Wars universe would you most like to own? Oh, these are really cool. Um, uh, uh, uh. I'm stuck between an X-wing and the Falcon because I feel like they're both so iconic. But I feel like the X-wing might be more fun, and like even though the Falcon's very uh, mobile and and uh, and nimble like i feel like the i i would love the idea of like being a part of the death star run or something like yeah. that so yeah let me say x-wing all right did you play the x-wing video game back in the oh yeah oh my gosh that, that was, was awesome. i lived on that thing that was fantastic that was yeah. one of my favorites all right you have to pick one as your favorite a porg an ewok or jar jar binks <laughs> holy cow <laughs> uh, um i do love them all uh, I will say Ewok because again, for when I was growing up, that was the first, uh, kind of cool, cute, uh, thing for me. So I'm going to go with Ewok. All right. Um, and I, and I, yeah, they're pretty awesome. <laughs> Fair enough. If you could be any character in Star Wars and you voiced so, so many of them, who would it be <laughs> and why? Oh, wow. Um, Man, I'm answering these as if my life depends on it. Um, <laughs> Just your I reputation. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck between Luke and Yoda. Um, I mean, Yoda, because you could live so long, so you could experience so much, um, have that much mastery over the force. Um, he teaches kids. So I think that's a pretty cool trait. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, probably Yoda because Luke has a lot of tragedy in his life. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, he, you know, so like I, 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 there's a part of me that wants to be the hero, 
but there's a huge cost to being the hero and, and, and he had to, he had to suffer a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with Yoda. Yoda for two. I, I actually, I saw it uh, actually, I think it was just today on Twitter. Somebody made an observation that I'm not sure I'd ever thought of before. And that is that Yoda may be the only Jedi to have died of natural causes. Wow. <laughs> Which I'd never thought about. Right. I mean, he's the only one, right? Is that true? That's gotta be true. Right. That we've seen for that sure. We've seen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. That's cool. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. That's a great trivia question. There you go. So, so see, now you, you've gotten something from this as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it came from me, but it was, you know. Um, all right, your favorite trilogy, the originals, the prequels, or the sequels? Uh, I got to go with the originals uh, yeah. because there is that just sweet spot. Like when you grow up with it, it just, when you're experiencing something like that for the first time, it means so much to you, you know. Yeah. But I've seen like, people that have grown up with the prequels, they feel the way about the prequels that I feel about the originals, you know? Yeah. And, yep. and even though I love things about all of them, I do think there's something special about when you're, when you're seeing it at the right age, that, that it, it just, it, it solidifies and means something a little bit extra. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've said this before recently, but I, I, I still can't get over it because it's really interesting to me. Um, but it's right in line with what you're, you're saying is it's, it's what brought you into it. And what my, my daughter, you know her her Star Wars trilogy is the sequels. I mean, she dressed up as Ray before she even. Oh, saw that's the movie. great! Loves it. Oh, and, that's so cool. And and my son, this is this shocked me because um, I never would have thought of it, but he came in through the Clone Wars television show. Oh, and you know, there's so much we take for granted. We were talking before you and I about how, you know, it's it's so ingrained in in who you are. Well, you know, you were two when you saw it. I was seven. When, you know, when it was released, rather. Oh, yeah. So it's always been a part of our life. And I took for granted that, you know, my son would would know that the clones turned. But we when we watched the Clone Wars series oh, wow. and when 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 the clones get Order 66, my son was like stunned and shocked because he loved Rex. He loved Cody. Wow. He loved them. And to see his heroes, his Star yeah. Wars heroes flip it, it. I didn't you know, as a parent, I was like, oh, my goodness, maybe I should have prepared him for yeah, that. Right. How but, old was he? He's seven. He's seven right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it it struck him and it, like he turned to me and he said, and what was really interesting to me was his he he said, you know, they were shooting robots and now they're basically just robots themselves. Oh wow. And, and I was like, that's so insightful for a seven year old. But yeah. I literally I, I literally saw like the shock on his face was like, whoa, what's going on? So yeah. but it's all about how you come into the to the series, I guess. Wow, that's cool. Uh and the last of the 10 questions. You're finally off the hook. What is your favorite Star Wars quote? <laughs> uh, it's uh, luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. Actually, I have a tattoo of that. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That's really great. Yeah. Well, that's that cool. Thank you so much for uh, for spending some time with me uh, and and my listeners today. This has been so much fun. Where can people follow you online where they can see your your videos and keep up with you on social media? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am Captain Ehud on Twitter. Uh, I'm Mark Thompson, Mark with a C on Facebook. Uh, I think I'm Captain Ehud on Instagram and on YouTube. I think I'm Mark Thompson. So. <laughs> what <laughs> One is, of two, either Mark Thompson or Captain Ehud. <laughs> I have to ask, what is Captain Ehud? Okay, so it was like when you had to come up with an Xbox uh, gamer tag. Yep. I, I every name I tried kept failing right so uh captain is just because i like science fiction and and captain or whatever and right. then hud is actually uh, a judge one of the judges from the book of judges in the old testament in the bible oh, okay and uh he was the guy who no one else in the land is standing up to the evil and oppression but ehud is the left-handed judge that goes and kills evil king eglon and and uh and, and wins the day there so it was i figured it was random enough that no one else would have that tag and i was right like, I, I don't see captain ehud anywhere else so. <laughs> and it's stuck ever since i use it for every username well i shouldn't say that but like i use it for a lot <laughs> it's, it's my atm password it's, yeah, yeah. Oops, i mean uh, <laughs> and, uh, delete delete never mind never mind <laughs> so when is uh ascendancy coming out it's uh, it was uh, moved I, up right it just got moved up yeah it's um i want to say september does that sound right to you i think so yeah i think yeah. it's early september so that's yeah. great well good. We just um i think 
I'm allowed to say this, but we we just did the multicast uh, audio drama for Doctor Afra. Oh, uh, awesome! I'm playing Darth Vader and a bunch of characters in that one, and that that one's like several actors. Yep. Uh, and that should be coming out either this summer or this fall. So that that'll be coming out pretty soon, also. That's great. I I love that she's made the jump from comic book. Yeah. To, to it's just an interesting character. So that's very cool. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the time, and uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about Thrawn and listening to my listening to Timothy Zahn versus reading him. No offense, Timothy, you're a great writer. But <laughs> it has to be Mark's voice. So, yeah. <laughs> thank thanks you. for having me. This was really fun. Cool. Thanks.